the current naming, the current nomenclature of our medication is confusing for the patient. Very often, very often we prescribe antidepressant for anxiety or so-called second generation antipsychotic to depressed patient who show no evidence of psychosis. Many times patients ask me, is my condition so bad that you are giving me antipsychotic? I guess it, it is horrifying to find that your depression is being treated with antipsychotic. And of course, it has an implication on adherence. The patient going back and try, the family, the patient trying to understand why their depression is being treated with antipsychotic. Does the term antipsychotic actually help us to make informed choices? We actually talk about first generation antipsychotic and second generation antipsychotic. Second generation, what does it mean? Does it actually help us to make informed choices? Are amisulperide and aripiprazole are really like things? Are they really belong to the same category? Let's look at nomenclature in other fields in medicine. Let's look at our colleagues who treat hypertension. Their nomenclature is based on mechanism. And they are talking about diuretics, beta receptor blocker, calcium antagonist, AC inhibitor, and so on. And basically, they use the nomenclature as a tool while they are trying to make the next pharmacological step. So let's say if they would like to augment the treatment, they utilize the nomenclature. And of course, they use, if they would like to augment, they use medication with different type of mechanism. Our nomenclature, the indication-based nomenclature, is not helpful in this regard. And this is strange. We are keep updating our system in psychiatry. There is constantly updating in the diagnostic system, moving from DSM-4 to DSM-5, from ICD-10 to ICD-11, but our nomenclature of psychotropic remains somehow around DSM-2. Five major international organizations joined forces 10 years ago in order to come up with new uh, nomenclature. This includes the ECNP, the ACNP, the ASEAN College, the CINP, the International College, and IEUFAR, the International Union of Basic and Clinical Pharmacology. All of these five organizations joined forces in order to uh, come up with better, updated type of nomenclature. In the task force, you see uh, two members of each organization. The mission. The mission was to try to come up with a nomenclature that helped the clinician to make informed choices when they are trying to figure out the next pharmacological step and to decrease stigma and enhance adherence by naming system that lays out the rationale for selecting a specific psychotropic. Just, just to clear one point, all the expenses related to developing this were covered by ECNP. There was no direct or indirect support from any pharmaceutical company. The core element is composed of two dimensions. One is pharmacology, and the other is mode of action. Let's focus about pharmacology. While we are prescribing our medication, how many pharmacological domain are we touching upon? If we're talking about a uh, pharmacological domain, we actually, at this point of time, tapping about this pharmacological, 10 pharmacological uh, domain. Each time that we are prescribing any psychotropic, we tap upon one of these 10. Right? So now we are moving to the second part of the nomenclature, of the neuroscience-based nomenclature, the pharmacologically-driven nomenclature, and we focus on mode of action. 
And I'm going to pose again the question, how many modes of action we got in psychotopics? We got at this point nine. So basically, if you think about it, the medication that we are using nowadays, all the medications that we are using nowadays are composed of, you know, combination between this, the, this 210 pharmacological domain and this 29 uh, mode of action. So based on this, we came up with some product. The product is a book, which is NBN, uh, and we got also NBN child and adolescent version. The NBN, the neuroscience-based nomenclature, expand our vocabulary. We are moving from this limited vocabulary of antidepressant, antipsychotic, anxiolytic, hypnotic, mood stabilizer, stimulant, and we using and we can help us, encourage us, allow us to use different words, more words, more concept, when thinking and prescribing uh, and describing the treatment. So if you think about it, how many different tools we got now in psychiatry? So you basically got 60 different groups of drugs to refer to. Think about it each time, each time that we are uh, prescribing medication, we have 60 different groups of drugs based on different pharmacology and mode of action to choose from. Using naming system, NBN, that clarified the rationale for choosing certain medication, because it provides us 60 different tools, it helps the field to move towards precise medicine. Where we stand now in NBN 219, let's uh, look at the number of users worldwide, and we're talking about both NBN and NBNCA. There is steady growth in the number, uh, while we started in uh, 16, uh, it's moving on, and you see that it's uh, growing up. What about journal and books that recommend to use it? So if we look at the journal, uh, more than 20 leading journal, much more than 20 leading journal recommend to use it, including, you see, uh, American Journal, Biological Psychiatry, British Journal, and so on. All of this journal recommend or uh, to use this while you're writing a paper. What about books? So it is part of the Oxford textbook, it's part of the prescribing guide. Steve Stahl is part of, of the task force. It's going to be uh, in Motsley uh, prescribing uh, guideline uh, in psychiatry, the next edition. So it is there and more and more organization uh, accept and uh, recommend to use NBN. Uh, it is also uh, part of some of educational activity like the NNCI, the American National Neuroscience Curriculum Initiative. It's part of the new curriculum of the uh, British College of Psychiatry, the Royal College of Psychiatry. Uh, there is um, a collaboration with the RDOC. It's part of the guidance of BAP for bipolar. And just recently, we got an endorsement from the APA. This was a couple of months ago, and the APA have an official uh, acknowledgement, uh, and they put a position statement on NBN. They also point out some positive features regarding this, and uh, going back to what we mentioned earlier, the potential of improving patient acceptance of medication recommendation, i.e. a resolution of the why I'm getting antidepressant if I'm not depressed problem. Harmonization of psychiatry with other speci speci uh, speciality, reference to specific mechanism of action, avoidance of some of non-scientific terminology such as major and minor tranquilizer or second generation antipsychotic. We talk about all of this. And I think this is very important point, providing an important teaching tool that presents the depth and richness of neuroscience fabric of psychotropic. 
And we think that this, while you are teaching students, it could be a very important tool. And then what we mentioned earlier, expanding the psychiatric toolbox, referring to the 60 different types of pharmacological tools that are uncovered. So basically, how everybody can join in, and the way to join in is to download the app. It is free of charge. You can get it either on Google Play or iTunes apps, and you can download it by taping NBNTO. And I encourage you to do it now. What is included in the app? In the app, we got the nomenclature, the pharmacology, and mode of action. And in order to make it useful, in order to make it useful, we include also four additional dimensions, di which are the approved indication, the efficacy and side effect, the practical notes, and the neurobiology. What is included in approved in indication? It's basically a list based on the recommendation of major regulatory bodies like the FDA, the EMA, etc. So basically, telling us where it is approved. Second part of the app, second di dimension of the app is efficacy and side effect. Let's focus on efficacy. Efficacy aimed to highlight the situation where the compound fell short of approval for formal in indication, although there is evidence to support its use what we call off-label. And it's very important since many times the indication is not reflecting the scientific knowledge and the indication, as you know, is, is uh, many times related to some of the commercial interest of the pharmaceutical company rather than to the scientific basis. Regarding the side effect, we uh, only include prevalent life-threatening side effect only this, so not all the side effects. The practical note is a very important part of the app. It summarizes the clinical knowledge, including the dosing recommendation that has been pro provided by filtering through the, the task force opinion savage. And the neurobiology, which is other part, is described basically empirical uh, data and the, the, the divided into preclinical and clinical section, which emphasis on the later, on the clinical section.